Okay, guys, welcome back. This is how you deploy an XG Boost model, very shortened. Okay, so after you find out which region you're in, create a bucket, and then import the data sets. I imported two, obviously, test and train and split them further, and then I dropped these two columns for each. Okay, we upload them into the S3 bucket. As you can see, but we use PB Concat, which really helps. Okay. Yeah, last time uh, for classification, we used a linear learner. But this time we used uh, XG Boots. I wanted to show you something, and with even less code. And we only needed to use a S3 input. I mean, we only need to use a train set. And guess what? We only got 11%, I mean, 0.011% uh, error. So 1% uh, error, 1.1 technically. And we deployed it at this instance. And then uh, we pre-processed the data this way. You know, the test data from earlier to NumPy, spliced it. And here we go, it's in the data frame for predicted. Now, as far as the test data, this is the head and this is the tail. And this is the info. You can kind of use this as a guide to the predicted, how this being the head of the predicted and the tail. Okay, guys. Um, one advantage of XG Boost is you can do multi-class classification. It doesn't necessarily have to be binary. That's the linear learner. You do the binary classifier type. That's the only disadvantage of linear learner. Even though I like linear learner a lot better. The only another advantage of XG Boost is for linear learner we had to put the number of end samples. Here we don't. The only parameters are the max depth, the min child weight. These other ones have very little impact. You can play with them. And, but, and then uh, linear learner uh, measures accuracy. This one measures more of error. As you can see, the training history. It started off uh, good, and then it got even better. Okay, guys, that's it. I uh, hope you learned from this video. Thank you. Bye.